Hi everybody, I'm Ryan and today we're going to talk about blue white control in Pioneer. Now there's a ton of different versions of blue white control. There's the Lotus version, there's a 60 card version, there's the Yorian 80 card version, but the most common version is the Kira 60 card version. So that's what we're going to focus on, at least to start on this channel. In this video, I'm going to talk about the overall strategy of the deck, card choices of the deck, what cards are for, what sideboard cards are for, and things like that, just like your normal deck tech. So let's jump into it. So this is your average blue-white control deck. I actually played blue-white control at the RC this past weekend. Uh, I was playing the Yorian version, so it wasn't exactly this 75. But this is what you'll see most of the time uh, people playing blue-white control. So let's start with the lands. We're playing a Castle Ardenvale because we're trying to hit as many land drops as possible. Notice we're running 27. That's a pretty land-heavy deck. And we always want something to do with our mana. And so creating a 1-1 one, one white human, if we have an extra 5 mana or extra 4 mana plus Castle Arjun Veil, vale, is pretty strong. Deserted Beach is a uh, Azorius land that comes in untapped if you control two or more other lands. So as long as you don't play it on the first or second turn, it is essentially a dual land. And a Ganjo, mostly just because it's free. These spell lands are very powerful. Field of Ruin is excellent in this deck because, again, we always want ways to use our mana. And uh, there's a lot of really powerful lands, uh, both in the mirror matches and, and basically against every deck. And so being able to just stop that when we want to use our mana anyway is is pretty strong flood farm verge is one of the new azorius lands it comes in untapped all the time and only taps for white however if you control planes or an island it taps for a blue as well and frankly white is the most important color in this deck at least in the first few turns and it taps for blue most of the time uh, in most games Fountain Port is the, one of the most surprising powerful cards to me or in most recently printed cards uh Again, you you always want to be using all of your mana. And so you can pay three mana and one life to create a 1-1 one, one bluefish creature token. Um, and that's just like pretty awesome. You know, it, it applies a threat similar to Castle Ardenvale. However, you can pay two mana and sacrifice a token to draw a card. So that includes the human token you make with Castle Ardenvale. That includes the fish token you make with Fountain Port. The paying four mana create a treasure token. That includes that token. It includes the map you make with Restless Anchorage. It includes uh, the samurai you make with Wandering Emperor, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. Even fishes you make with Beza, whatever. And so this allows you to really outcard your opponent while using your mana in an efficient way. Call the Storm Giants as a one of to just close out games against uh, Control and Phoenix and things like that. It's a little bit worse against Control because of Fountain Port, but it's still very strong. Uh, playing four Hallowed Fountain, just a Azoria Shockland coming in untaps all important. Two Island and two Plains. Ottawara as another one of our spell lands just because it's free. And then two Restless Anchorage just as more manned lands. We're only playing two because it's really important these things come in untapped in this like really aggressive aggro meta. And so we don't want to play too many Restless Anchorage in that capacity. Uh, I'm going to rearrange this deck just a little bit to make it a little bit easier to talk about. Okay, so I divided these up into five piles, uh, denoting kind of the different roles that each one of these cards has. We're playing two Dovin's Veto with the other two in the sideboard uh, because it's a bunch of powerful non-creature spells, whether it be the Mirror Match or the Enigmatic deck or whatever. Normalize is just a harder to cast Mana Leak um, and it gets exiled instead of put into the graveyard, which is pretty relevant, like against things like Memory Deluge and whatever. Three Steps Ahead is a really interesting card. You pay one mana for it and then pay additional costs depending on what you want for it. It's a pretty bad rate if you are always doing one of these things, but all of the things are actually very relevant. Um, you can pay an additional blue and generic to counter a target spell. So it's can just be a cancel. You can pay an extra three mana to create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, which is pretty cool alongside like Hallbreaker Horror, because notice it's not until end of turn. And you can pay an additional two generic to draw two cards and discard a card. And you can do as many of these as you want. So a very common play pattern is using the cancel and the try to discard two for five mana. It's effectively like a kind of medium cryptic command, right? You, my opponent casts a spell, I pay five mana, counter that spell, draw two, discard one. This is a very powerful effect. Though, again, if you're only using one of these effects, it's not a very good card. We're playing two High Noon. This is very good against the Phoenix deck and very good against the uh, Slickshot Showoff decks. Also pretty good against Mono Green with them plotting Outcaster Trailblazers and things like that. This is our removal suite. 
We're playing two temporary lockdown, which is very good against these aggressive decks and against the sack deck. We're playing two get loss. We pay two mana to destroy target creature enchantment or planeswalkers. Controller creates two maps. Just having decent instant speed removal is awesome. And normally we don't care about the maps that we're giving our opponent. We're playing a farewell. Uh, just being able to reset the game with just a one of is pretty powerful, though six mana is quite a lot of mana. We're playing four March of Otherworldly Light, where white and x exile target artifact creature enchantment with mana value x or less and we can exile any number of white cards from our hand to have it cost two less to cast for each exile this way this is just the best removal spell in the deck by by a lot it allows us to kill man lands for just one mana it can kill tokens for just one mana it answers enchantments as well that's just so powerful and two supreme verdict just as a can't be countered destroy all creatures as far as kill conditions besides these man lands that we're playing uh we're playing for wandering emperor uh wandering emperor has a minus one where we create two two white samurai creature token with vigilance which is awesome uh we can also put plus one to put a plus one plus one counter up to one target creature against first strike till end of turn which is pretty cute and a really common mode of this is it's minus two exile target tapped creature you gain two life so a really common way to play wandering emperor is they attack with a big creature you play wandering emperor exile that creature untap uh either kill the wandering emperor to create a two two or plus to put a second loyalty counter on it um and then just start making samurais and and protecting wandering emperor and killing your opponent it's also really good to cast Wandering Emperor just into nothing, just to start putting on pressure and force your opponent to do stuff. And then this last category is card advantage. So we're playing two Teferi Hero Dominaria. The reason we're only playing two is five mana is a lot of mana to tap at sorcery speed. But once it's on the battlefield, uh, we can plus it to draw a card and at the end step, untap two lands. So we can like tap out for it on five, uh, draw a card, and then be able to leave up something like Get Lost or a uh, Counterspell or something like that. It's minus three is put target non-land permanent into its owner's library third from the top. So we just tuck it into the deck. And then if we're able to get to its ultimate, you get an emblem with whenever you draw a card, exile target permanent and opponent controls. And if you ever do that, you kind of just win the game. Playing a one of Narset, uh, stopping our opponent from drawing more than one card each turn is super powerful, whether it be against Mono Green or against Phoenix. I'm sure there are other decks is excellent against, good against like Lotus and whatever. But then we get to minus two loyalty, so we can activate it twice. If you look at the top four cards of your library, you may reveal a non-creature, non-land card from among them and put into your hand the rest of the body of your library in a random order. Very powerful. Playing three Memory Deluge, where we can look at the top X cards of your library, where X is the amount of mana spent to cast this spell. Put two of them in your hand, the rest of the body of your library in a random order. What's beautiful about this is this pairs so well with Wandering Emperor. You know, if they do something scary, we Wandering Emperor. If not, we Memory Deluge. It's just so good. So, so good. And then being able to flash it back for seven mana, which means we look at the top seven cards um, and grab two. So it's a great, great card advantage engine and just pairs really nicely with the rest of our deck. And we're playing two Deduce. Uh, which is basically a better think twice. Uh, we can pay two mana, draw a card, and investigate, which creates a clue where at some point in the future we can pay another two mana, uh, sacrifice the clue, and draw a card. And so with all of these things, what we're trying to do is stop our opponent from doing the thing and then slowly kill our opponent once, our, once they burn out. It is your basic, basic archetypal blue-white control deck. That being said, our sideboard... Um, we already talked about High Noon, just very good against these decks that want to cast multiple spells a turn, whether it be Lotus, Phoenix, the uh, Slickshot Aggro decks, Mono Green, whatever. Uh, Knockout Blow is for these red aggressive decks. Beza is really good against everything except for anything you would consider a combo. So I think it's very good against the Aggro decks because it gains life and creates blockers. It's essentially just like a timely reinforcement creature <laughs> where you create a treasure token if opponent controls more lands than you you gain four life if opponent controls more life than you and create two one one blue for creature tokens if opponent has more creatures than you and draw a card if your opponent has more cards in hand than you so i think it's good against mid-range as well because it can happen to draw a card and just like having creatures post board against mid-range when they're forced to bring out removal i think is very powerful and then also for a similar reason pretty good in the mirror match like if we can play this card and then draw a card from it it's a threat and we draw a card, every single card matters in these control mirrors. And so Baze is really strong. It's just not very good against the combo decks. Aether Gust, uh, two mana instant, choose target spell a permanent that's red or green. Its owner puts it on top and bottom of their library. Uh, we play this card against like the mono green deck and against the red aggressive decks. Uh, Mystical Dispute for these other blue decks, whether it be the mirror match or spirits or lotus combo or whatever. Three mana counter target spell unless control pays three and it costs two less to cast if it targets a blue spell. Playing one Shark Typhoon, just adds a good mid-range killer and uh, a decent card to help fix our land drops and apply pressure in the mirror match and stuff. 
um, where it's an enchantment where whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put an XX blue shark creature token with flying where X that spells mana value. So it's a great finisher, but we can cycle it for one blue, one generic and one X. And when you cycle it, which you draw a card when you cycle, create an XX blue shark creature token with flying. Hellbreaker Horror is another just like awesome kill condition against these uh, mid-range decks and uh, these control decks. It's also decent against combo if you're able to get there. Um, against most combo decks, you can't really get there though. It's really, really hard to. Dovin's Veto, again, for these non-creature decks, we already talked about it when we talked about uh, the main deck Dovin's Veto. And then Kahira, just because it's free and just having another threat, just like on a stick, even if we side in the Beza, just excellent. The only thing it doesn't get along with is Hullbreaker Horror, but that is totally fine. I think if you really want access to Kahira, you could totally just play a second Shark Typhoon instead of Hullbreaker Horror. I just think Hullbreaker Horror is just so good in the mirror match that we want to keep it. But if you're playing the 75 and side in Hullbreaker Horror, be sure to not reveal Kahira. You will lose. There is Blue White Control in Pioneer. Just a quick explanation of each card and of the deck itself. If you like this video, Please be sure to like and subscribe. Check me out on social media's links are above me and in the description. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.